All the charges that were brought forth uh, against me uh, were dropped by the Crown today. And uh, yeah, it would appear that uh, it was not me that broke the law, but uh, the law itself broke the law. Justice has not been served. Uh, my restaurant was closed illegally, a business of 20 years, supported two families, employed 30 people, and was a uh, institution in Calgary, uh, a thing of beauty. All we did was profess love, and it was met with the most vile hate I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, but uh, it does feel good to uh, have all charges cleared. This is the elephant in the room, is, is that these, so many people have lost their businesses as a result of unconstitutional and unlawful acts by the government in enforcing uh, these disgusting COVID uh, mandates. Sydney Vizard for Rebel News. Today in Calgary, Jesse Johnson, owner of Without Papers Pizza, faced his ruling in the courts for refusing to enforce the vaccine passport bylaw. After two years, he's finally been vindicated, as all of his charges have now been dropped entirely, thanks to the great work of the Democracy Fund's crowdfunded legal defense, Williamson Law. Donate to the fight against vaccine mandates. Go to fightvaccinepassports.com. We interviewed Jesse and his legal counsel to get their reaction to these results. But the question remains, with this restaurant still closed, has justice been served? So these folks who are concerned about mandatory vaccines have nothing to be concerned about, and there will be no vaccine passports in Alberta. Mm -hmm. That is why the government has uh, reluctantly decided to adopt the restriction exemption program, a proof of vaccination program. Jesse's battle began in October 2021, as Alberta began the introduction of vaccine passports. And in Calgary, they were faced with the passport bylaw 65M 2021 forcing a wide range of businesses and restaurants to now check the medical records of everyone seeking to attend. It's the right thing to do because it allows all of us who have been fully vaccinated to actually get out and enjoy our lives a little bit. It allows us to get our kids and ourselves into sports and recreation activities. It allows us to go to restaurants knowing that the person at the next table is also vaccinated. Jesse could not bring himself and his restaurant to discriminate against people, as he lived by the premise of being welcoming and accepting to all. I need the license off the wall. Your license has been suspended as you no longer have health approval. All right, so I need your business license off the wall. We adhere to the laws. Um, we expect uh, the law holders, the people who uh, should be defending us, uh, to adhere to the oaths that they've also taken uh, to not discriminate. All of the people in here are humans, every single one of them. They have their choice. It's not a leper colony. The majority of the people in this room are vaccinated and also fighting for our beliefs. And we will continue to do so as well. That's it. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on. He closed his restaurant in defiance, but continued to provide pizza outside his doors free of charge for anyone willing to eat. Anyways, folks, um, the reason why we're here is because picnic tables are on public property and there's no permit for it, so we've got to remove the table. Even though Jesse was no longer selling pizza, but rather giving it away for free, that didn't stop the continued punitive measures taken against him, such as the seizure of benches and milk crates. Eventually, police locked Jesse out of his restaurant altogether. Countless demonstrations ensued into the months ahead, advocating for the lifting of government restrictions like the vaccine passport bylaw. Demonstrations carried on for without papers into January 2022, at which point Canada would come to a halt as freedom convoys and blockades descended upon the nation. All of these people here just want to exist within society. That's it. Please let us exist within society. Rescind all vaccine mandates and let's go back to normal. The Coots blockade in particular saw former Premier Jason Kenney have Alberta's health restrictions lifted overnight, and so too Calgary's vaccine passport bylaw nearly five months after its introduction. The threat of COVID-19 uh, to public health is uh, no, no longer outweighs the hugely damaging impact of health restrictions on our society, on people's mental health, on their emotional well-being, on uh, uh, our broader social health. We will never know, we'll never be able to do a full accounting of the extent of the pain and hardship that restrictions have caused. But by then, the damage to Without Papers was done. His restaurant was gone and his trial imminent.
as highlighted by the Democracy Fund, Jesse was charged in October 2021 with breaching multiple bylaws after its business license was suspended for not complying with public health orders, and after undercover inspectors were permitted to purchase pizza and remain in the restaurant without providing proof of vaccination. Among other things, the allegations against the pizzeria were that it permitted persons to enter and remain on the premises without proof of vaccination, and that it did not display prescribed signage. Though the jury's still out as to whether or not the Sky Palace, which the former Premier Jason Kenney violated his own rules at, will suffer the same consequences. Ultimately, Jesse had been issued multiple tickets amounting to over $10,000. Numerous warrants for his arrest was stripped of his business and liquor license, food handling permits, and the dream restaurant he built for decades on end. Today, November 15th, 2023, the courts have finally come to their conclusion, and Jesse's charges have now been dropped in their entirety, thanks to the help of the Democracy Fund's crowdfunded legal defense. Sadly, the Without Papers Pizza restaurant still remains closed. Amazing results at the supposed trial today. Uh, a big shout out to a uh, lawyer of record on the file, Martin Raymond, with my office, who carried this thing from stem to stern. Um, you know, we work as a team, but uh, Marty really pulled out all the stops on this one, filed a robust disclosure application, seeking a whole bunch of additional documents, a similar strategy that we've employed uh, when we've come up against the government on so many of these different fight the fines cases. Uh, we also filed, uh, as we always do, a robust charter notice. Um, and frankly, the Crown just didn't call any evidence. Uh, the judge dismissed uh, all of the charges against uh, uh, Jesse and without papers. So a uh, great result. It uh, took about half an hour to get uh, into the courtroom and get the file brought down. Uh, but what, what, a, uh, what a great result. And uh, uh, kudos to uh, Jesse for uh, standing up to uh, the tyranny of government overreach. And uh, kudos to... Uh, uh, Martin Raymond for uh, really pulling out the stops and helping him out on this file. Uh, all the charges that were brought forth uh, against me uh, were dropped by the Crown today. And uh, yeah, it would appear that uh, it was not me that broke the law, but uh, the law itself broke the law. How does it feel to have this acquittal? Have you been vindicated? Has justice been served? No, justice has not been served. Uh, my restaurant was closed illegally, a business of 20 years, supported two families, employed 30 people, and was a uh, institution in Calgary, uh, a thing of beauty. All we did was profess love, and it was met with the most vile hate I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, but uh, it does feel good to uh, have all charges cleared. Why did all of this happen in the first place? I stood up and said that I would not uh, discriminate uh, my own customers. Uh, it was not up to me to judge a single person that came into my restaurant. Uh, you know, the good Lord will judge you, not me. It was never my job. Uh, it's against the very ethos of our profession to do something like that. The vaccine passport, uh, in my opinion, uh, was a grotesque perversion of hospitality. Uh, and uh, it, 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 in my opinion, uh, it was uh, it was. It was able to pass through because uh, every restaurant in Canada was essentially held hostage uh, by the government. They took away our customers uh, and then offers us loans, demand loans in order to stay in business. Every single restaurant took that. And uh, should you speak against the narrative, uh, you were to have been destroyed uh, and owing money to uh, CRA. In my opinion, you'd be better off if you owed that money to the Hells Angels. At least they have uh, scruples and morals and values. What was it that caused you guys the victory here? As we've seen in so many of these cases, when the Crown is faced with a bristled and robust and fulsome defense by experienced counsel who have been acting on these files, uh, as well as counsel who are supported by the, uh, uh, you know, the generous donations of uh, uh, people who have been providing uh, funds to civil liberties charities like the Democracy Fund. Um, frankly, I just don't know if it's worth prosecuting these. I don't know if it's in the public interest. Uh, Clearly, a place called Without Papers Pizza that was forced to, sh to ask people to show their papers. Uh, there's a, an element of irony there uh, that I don't think was necessarily lost on the Crown. Uh, I mean, this happened, obviously, at trial. Uh, so there's a lot that happened behind the scenes. We were you know, hopeful that this would be uh, withdrawn by the Crown much earlier. Um, at the end of the day, we also think that the Ingram decision 
that found that the CMOH orders, uh, and of course everyone's been talking about the Ingram decision, uh, that likely had a significant bearing on the implementation of the restriction exemption program by the City of Calgary and their bylaws. So this is a little different than the Public Health Act tickets that we were fighting, uh, but it's under the same umbrella. And Ingram really, uh, you know, stuck the final uh, spear into the heart of the beast that has been uh, the bane of Albertans for the last three years. It's a combination of uh, bristled defense as well as the Ingram decision that have come and culminated in over 150 cases uh, either being tossed outright, uh, dismissed at trial, uh, or being uh, resolved with like a donation to the food bank. Um, so it's a it's a pretty astounding record, uh, you know, the fact that we we don't have one conviction at trial in nearly three years of this. So this is a credit to everyone that has uh, chipped into the democracy fund to uh, um, to pay for defenses that other people cannot. These people wouldn't have been able to pay for otherwise. And the vaccine passport uh, was essentially deemed ultra vires or illegal. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was the only restaurant that uh, that stood up that was destroyed for it. You know, everybody else that time is, uh, has passed. Uh, it's my hope that uh, when uh, this is enacted again or something similar along that lines, that uh, what I've done here today will cause others to stand up and uh, defend the, uh, the rights and freedoms that we so dearly cherish in this country. I think it's important for everybody to stand up. The people are the power uh, and united uh, we are strong and uh, divided uh, we, we fail. And I think that's been the, uh, the case uh, of the Canadian government uh, uh, for the last three, four years is to divide us all uh, and to cause us to, uh, to, to, to scramble and to fall. It's, it's, a, it's a tragedy, but the people are the power. Uh, and uh, yeah, pizza to the people. Has the Democracy Fund done their due diligence in helping you? 100%. Uh, if it was not for the Democracy Fund, I don't think I'd be sitting here today. Uh, I was offered uh, many plea deals from the uh, from the Crown. I turned them all down. And uh, the fact of the matter is that after my restaurant was shut down, uh, I uh, suffered uh, tremendous financial loss. Uh, and if uh, a charity like the Democracy Fund uh, had not been provided to me, I would not have been able to defend myself in the court. It would have been an interesting case to try, but this is a great result. Uh, it's quick. Uh, and to the point, I mean, it did, you know, lead up to the uh, courthouse steps. The, the, the biggest issue that remains, um, and this is the elephant in the room, is, is that these, so many people have lost their businesses as a result of unconstitutional and unlawful acts by the government in enforcing uh, these disgusting COVID uh, mandates. Um, I know that there are civil actions brewing. Uh, uh, I know that there's a massive uh, civil action brewing, I believe a class action. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, where these files uh, uh, go, go further down the road. Obviously the restaurant is no longer. How did it feel to see Premier Smith being able to sell her restaurant after the pandemic was over? Whereas you're kind of left holding the bag for a lot of what went down. No, that's exactly it. Uh, we put, uh, I worked 20 years to build that restaurant. Uh, in that 20, I worked 30 years. Uh, and for it to be destroyed because uh, we accept it all is something that's taken me a very long time to, uh, to accept and to get over. Uh, there's been a lot of hatred in my heart. Uh, and what I've learned is that uh, the only way through this is forgiveness. Forgiveness for those who have persecuted me and uh, forgiveness for uh, the system in general. It, it almost seems like the takeaway here is that the process is the punishment. There's amnesty for the abusers and there's no recompense for the victims. Is that a fair statement? I think that's exactly fair. I've been proven innocent of all kind of crimes that uh, I was accused of, uh, but yet my restaurant was shut down unadjudicated. Uh, in the end, as you very well know, said we were giving away pizzas for free for free on the street to anybody passed, uh, passed by, uh, and they shut my restaurant down for that. Uh, it's ludicrous, it's insanity. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very, very unfortunate. Um, yeah, I don't know how long it'll take me for me to recover from it, to be honest with you. For those like Jesse, who faced tickets and worse for standing up for Canadian principles and civil liberties, having spent two years in the process of clearing his name of wrongdoing has been a punishment in and of itself. For Rebel News, Sydney Fizard. Freedom for all! From day one, we've been there covering Jesse's story. Weeks turned into months of on the ground, day and night reporting. The only way we're able to do our independent journalism is through your generous donations. To help us cover the other side of the story, donate at rebelfieldreports.com.